not too sure actually because I'm all of the above. I'm fantastic, you know, multi-talented. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, ability to sort of talk to people, be comfortable with any kind of people, being able to sort of relate to them or be able to like understand or being able to like converse with them. That was my education. I don't think it's the actual subjects I took. I, I don't even remember half the subjects I took. I, I think I've always wanted to speak well and because I couldn't sort of get into theatre, I've never taken any theatre workshops per se, right? I've, and I've never uh, taken acting classes and um, but I've always wanted to sort of impress people by speaking well so like I sort of when I came back my first semester after my uh, when I went to Wales my first semester when I came back I had a bit of a Welsh and British accent and <laughs> it was just everyone's like why do you sound like you know you you know had sex with a goat you know it's like <laughs> why do you have that accent and um, I don't know I, I, that, I mean obviously growing up you have you want to sort of impress people through various ways and I think accent was one thing but secondly, I think more importantly, something which stuck with me through the years of being in England and being in Wales and in the US uh, was speaking well. But honestly, I didn't know I, have, I had a good voice. And I, you know, now I probably believe it a little bit because lots of people have told me, but I still don't think it's anything um, that spectacular. Uh, so a friend of mine offered, he just started his advertising uh, agency, it was an idea shop called Happy Creative Services. So he's like, why don't you come and try out being a copywriter because you have like, you know, witty lines, etc. So it was really nice. It was actually a nice experience because I just got, got um, you know, was around by ad people, they were very chilled out and a very small outfit as well. So we could just get along really well. So the people were nice, but then I realized the job wasn't for me. And in fact, that's where I got my first sort of exposure to radio. Because I was uh, I was working with this character called Chamraj Pechals, who was this uh, you know this Bangalore guy giving a take on life, and uh, I didn't do the voice. I was just writing for it, and that's my first sort of experience going into a studio, being on the other side of the booth, and this guy's doing all these, these takes, and I'm like, oh, this sounds like an interesting uh, option. I wouldn't mind doing this. And then I moved to, of course, the dream job of the IT job, <laughs> which was. Uh, I was again a copywriter there. In 2009, uh, Veerdas came down with these amateur comedy nights. So it was a competition where anywhere between, I don't know if we'd have, I did three of those over the course of a year, like two minute spots, five to 10 people would compete and the best person would get a five minutes for the next time he came down. So I won, I, first two times I was awful. Third time I was a little better and so happened that I was the best considering that others were not doing that well that evening. So I got a longer spot. So, but at that point, it had given me this thing where I was like, I need to get on stage. I need to uh, see whether I can make people laugh. And there's, there's more to do in just two, three minutes. I want to do 10 minutes. I want to do 15 minutes. I want to talk in front of people. I want to get their attention. And I want to get them to laugh at what I have to say about um, society life and about myself. First, I just thought it's like standing there and doing jokes. But then the, the sort of the final things came in like modulation, seeming natural, writing jokes which are a little deeper and writing jokes which are, you know, how to sort of uh, learn how to use these jokes in different settings. It's not just going with the same script. It's like, you know, modulate, you know, adapting the script with the jokes, with the circumstances, with the situation. So all those things started happening on the side. And then the IT job was done with in 2012, uh, 2011, um, August. And then I joined this internet radio startup thinking that I can actually write my comedy content and try it in the format of a show. So that's when I realized 2012 January I got this big break from the comedy store in Bombay and they gave me a weekend of six shows and I said that's it I'm done with all these other jobs. I'm going to do stand up comedy and whatever happens. I think it's just life. Just the way people behave, the way that um, the way that the world works, and just things like uh, I think it's just the source is people, and through that you have various outlets. You have what people do, what people say, what um, how people behave, what people make, what people don't make, what people uh, spoil. So all these are just like sources of what people are. So I think I, that's why I say life because it's what I'd say. I, I'm I, I like to observe life. Um, and through, uh, I like to enjoy life because through enjoying life, you can observe life and you can listen to life. It's been good. Uh, I have no complaints, no regrets. I think that's the most important thing, no regrets at all. I don't um, wish that I had started comedy earlier. I don't um, want to go back and make myself a better student. I don't want to 
go back and undo anything. It's just, I'm glad I realized uh, to accept what I have and I'm glad to realize that I've discovered stand-up comedy and I'm glad to have uh, made uh, the relationships that I have, especially with uh, sort of grown relationships with, you know, strengthen the relationships that I've had already, like the existing relationships, but also made uh, new friendships, made um, um, new, um, how do you, yeah, of course, friendships, and I've ended some friendships as well, which I'm happy about because it's just, so I think, yeah, I think I'm just glad to be where I am and be who I am with who I am. Um, don't do it, I'd say, because there's more competition for me. <laughs> don't do it because you want to get popular. Don't do it because you want um, to get the, 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 the ladies or the money. And don't do it if you're doing it uh, because you're not original. Like if you're original, because if you start copying, then you're, there's no point because then you're just, um, just you're a puppet of someone else's thoughts. But do it for the attention, the you, the, the, gratify, gr the gratification of getting those laughs, getting people coming and telling you after the show it's nice, it's fantastic, and that's what keeps you going in one part of your comedy career, because you want your uh, writing, your jokes, your thoughts, your experiences to be heard by others that's when you know you can become a stand-up comedian. It's not because you nail it the first night or the first 15th night. I mean, the 50, first 15 times would be terrible. But just that you go back there and you want to be on that stage holding a mic, talking to people and sharing your ideas on whatever it is. That's when you know you got, you're a stand-up comic. I think if you're fake, you're not going to be a good comic. I think if you're overconfident and you have everything in life, you're not going to make it as a comic. Uh, you've got to have some some issues because if life is perfect, it's boring, right? Uh, I think society is sensitive in the form that it hides behind a lot of these supposed political correct terms. I think people say, of course, education is important when it comes to awareness and sensitization, which is true. It's not the academic education, it's the education of the emotion. Just be a child, have fun, make mistakes, get hurt and hurt people because that's the only way you'll know. And the most important I'd say is that don't compete for com competition. Don't, don't let competition drive your life because you're going to ruin a lot of relationships through that. And don't just, I'd say be original, be true to yourself, have fun, make mistakes. So it's cool to be average. It's cool to be normal. It's cool to be abnormal. It's cool to be even... Um, below normal, because it's normal is what? Normal is what's defined by others. If you think you're normal and you're having fun, go for it. I think I'd like to tell a lot of the teachers that enjoy what you're doing. It's, it's really stupid that you mug up something and then ask someone else to mug up what you've mugged up. It's like a, a cycle of mugging up and no one learns. So I think you should learn and then the kids, students will learn. A couple of uh, sort of very fond memories I have is one being dressed up in my aunt's bra and panties and they were like three times too big so I had to figure it out. like no no this I didn't dress up on my own I was dressed up in it so it's not like I enjoy bra and panties dressing up like that and my uncle catching me and my uncle's a very proper like British person he's like oh young man that's lovely and he didn't, he didn't say that he said get out of those ridiculous clothes I was a real prick as a child I'm glad actually that I lost my sight that's why I became nice <laughs> it's true <laughs> The thing I'd like to say to people when it comes to disability is just, I don't know if words like sympathy, empathy are overused or underused. But I just want to say uh, there are different groups like women, men, and there are disabled people, there are, uh, there are gay people, there are different kinds of people. So, and there are overlaps within these groups. So it just takes all to make this world. So just accept that. Just be aware of others. I think being selfish is a little too much. And uh, so don't be greedy. I feel like I'm like a, can I have like a three, like a, like a mark in this, in this bit? like Nityananda, that's when the chicks come, anyway, but um, just be, don't be greedy, just have fun in life, um, just accept that it takes all to make this world and there are multiple kinds of people and just be kind to everyone, like you don't have to be kind to someone because they're disabled, 
just be kind to someone because they're a person.